This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Annie Coleman in St. Louis, Missouri, in February 2006. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Chapter 14. By and by, when we got up, we turned over the truck the gang had stole off of the wreck, and found boots and blankets and clothes, and all sorts of other things, and a lot of books, and a spy glass, and three boxes of cigars. We had never been this rich before in neither of our lives. The cigars was prime. We laid off all the afternoon in the woods talking, and me reading the books, and having a general good time. I told Jim all about what happened inside the wreck and at the ferry boat, and I said these kinds of things was adventures, but he said he didn't want no more adventures. He said that when I went in the Texas, and he crawled back to get on the raft and found her gone, he nearly died, because he judged it was all up for him any way it could be fixed. For if he didn't get saved, he would get drowned, and if he did get saved, whoever saved him would send him back home so as to get the reward, and then Miss Watson would tell him South Shore. Well, he was right. He was most always right. He had an uncommon level head for a nigger. I read considerable to Jim about kings and dukes and earls and such, and how gaudy they dressed, and how much style they put on, and called each other Your Majesty, and Your Grace, and Your Lordship, and so on, instead of Mister. And Jim's eyes bugged out, and he was interested. He says, I didn't know the day was so many in em. I hain't heard about none in em, scarcely, but old King Solomon, unless you count stem kings that's in a pack of cards. How much do a king get? Get, I says, why, they get a thousand dollars a month if they want it. They can have just as much as they want. Everything belongs to them. Ain't that gay? And what they got to do, Huck? They don't do nothing. Why, how you talk? They just sit around. No, is that so? Of course it is. They just sit around, except maybe when there's a war, then they go to the war. But other times they just lazy around, or go hawking, just hawking and sp- Shh! Do you hear a noise? We skipped out and looked, but it weren't nothing but the flutter of a steamboat's wheel away down, coming around the point. So we come back. Yes, says I. And other times, when things is dull, they fuss with the parliament. And if everybody don't go just so, he whacks their heads off. But mostly they hang round the harem. Round a witch? Harem. What's de harem? The place where he keeps his wives. Don't you know about the harem? Solomon had one. He had about a million wives. Why, yes, that's so. I, I done forgot it. A harem's a boarding house, I reckon. Most likely they has rackety times in the nursery. I reckon the wives quarrels considerable, and that creased a racket. Yet they say Solomon the wisest man did ever live. I don't take no stock in that. Because, why? Would a wise man want to live in the midst of such a blim blamin' all the time? No deed he wouldn't. A wise man had taken Bill a biler factory, and then he could shut down the biler factory when he want to rest. Well, but he was the wisest man anyway, because the widow she told me so her own self. I don't care what the widow say. He weren't no wise man nother. He had some of the dad fetchedest ways I ever see. Does you know about that child that he is gwine to chop in two? Yes, the widow told me all about it. Well, then, weren't that the beatin'est notion in the world? You just take and look at it a minute. That's the stump there. That's one of the women. Here's you. That's the other one. I Solomon, and dish your dollar bills to child. Both of you claims it. What does I do? Does I shin around amongst the neighbors and find out which un you de bill do belong to, and hand it over to de right one, all safe and sound, de way did anybody that had any gumption would? No, I take and whack de bill in two, and give half in it to you, and de other half to the other woman. That's the way Solomon was gwine to do with the child. 
Now I want to ask you, what's the use of dat half a bill? Can't buy nothing wid it. And what use is half a child? I wouldn't give a dern for a million in em. But hang it, Jim, you've clean missed the point. Blame it, you've missed it a thousand mile. Who, me? Go long. Don't talk to me about your points. I reckon I know sense when I sees it, and dey ain't no sense in such doings as dat. Dispute warn't about half a child, dispute was about a whole child, and de man that think he can settle a dispute about a whole child, wid a half a child don't know enough to come in out in de rain. Don't talk to me about Solomon, Huck. I knows him by de back. But I tell you, you don't get the point. Blame de point. I reckon I knows what I knows. And mind you, de real point is down further. It's down deeper. It lays in de way Solomon was raised. You take a man that's got only one or two chillin. Is dat man gwine to be wasteful of chillin? No, he ain't. He can't afford it. He know how to value em. But you take a man that's got about five million chillin run around the house, and it's different. He is soon chop a child in two as a cat. Days plenty more. A child or two more or less warn't no consequence to Solomon. Dad fetch em. I never see such a nigger. If he got a notion in his head once, there warn't no getting it out again. He was the most down on Solomon of any nigger I ever see. So I went to talking about other kings and let Solomon slide. I told about Louis XVI that got his head cut off in France a long time ago, and about his little boy the dolphin that would have been a king, but they took and shut him up in jail, and some say he died there. Poor little chap. But some says he got out and got away and come to America. That's good, but he'll be pooty lonesome. They ain't no kings here, is they, Huck? No. Then he can't get no situation. What he gwine to do? Well, I don't know. Some of them gets on the police, and some of them learns people how to talk French. Why, Huck, don't the French people talk the same way we does? No, Jim, you couldn't understand a word they said. Not a single word. Well, now, I be ding busted. How did that come? I don't know, but it's so. I got some of their jabber out of a book. Suppose a man was to come to you and say, Polly Vu Franzi, what would you think? I wouldn't think nothing. I'd take and bust him over the head, dat is, if he warn't white. I wouldn't allow no nigger to call me dat. Shucks, it ain't calling you anything. It's only saying, Do you know how to talk French? Well, then, why couldn't he say it? Why, he is a saying it. That's a Frenchman's way of saying it. Well, it's a blame ridiculous way, and I don't want to hear no more about it. They ain't no sense in it. Look a here, Jim. Does a cat talk like we do? No, a cat don't. Well, does a cow? No, a cow don't nother. Does a cat talk like a cow, or a cow talk like a cat? No, they don't. It's natural and right for em to talk different from each other, ain't it? Of course. And ain't it natural and right for a cat and a cow to talk different from us? Why, most surely it is. Well, then, why ain't it natural and right for a Frenchman to talk different from us? You answer me that. Is a cat a man, Huck? No. Well, then, there ain't no sense in a cat talking like a man. Is a cow a man, or is a cow a cat? No, she ain't either of them. Well, then, she ain't got no business to talk like either one or the other of em. Is a Frenchman a man? Yes. Well, then, Dad blame it, why don't he talk like a man? You answer me dat. I see it warn't no use wasting words. You can't learn a nigger to argue. So I quit. End of chapter 14